Welcome to my unboxing and first look at the SwiftTech H220. This is, by uh, any accounts that we've seen, the next generation in all-in-one CPU coolers because this bridges the gap in a true way between a regular all-in-one, which is what we've seen in the past. So the original all-in-one was kind of the Asetek LCLC, where it's pre-filled, pre-sealed, non-expandable. It was kind of tricky to install in terms of the mounting hardware and that other stuff. And this bridges the gap between that, that pre-filled, easy to install, relatively, you know, you don't have to replace it thing, and a truly custom loop. So it comes in an eco-friendly packaging. You've got cardboard here, and uh, just a sec, guys, we'll be right back. So beyond the eco-friendly packaging, we move on to what's included. The first thing you're gonna notice about this is it looks an awful lot like something that I've already done a video about before, where we actually check this out in the Swift Tech Suite at CES, and we pretty much know how it's gonna perform already, which is why I'm able to say something like next generation in pre-done liquid coolers because it has the horses to back up the claims that Swift Tech is making about this unit. So how does it function as a straight all-in-one? Well, you've got the mounting hardware not only included, but actually pre-attached for Intel, and then they include the mounting hardware that you need for AMD. So here we've got just a powder-coated uh, screw-based mechanism, so that'll go into presumably the, uh, the backplate that's included with your AMD motherboard. So those are using very, very uh, rugged mounting springs. It, Swift Tech does such a good job of their mounting mechanisms. So these look like all you gotta do is what? Yeah, affix them here and then screw them in. So, okay, now let's move on to the included one. So this covers pretty much any Intel mounting mechanism that you'd encounter, whether it's 775, 1155, 1156, and 2011, with the only changes being you would have to change out the screws here for 2011 due to the differing mounting pressure and the different threads compared to the included backplate that is used for all of the other sockets. Now, one of the first things I notice about the block itself, I didn't have much hands-on time with it when I was in the suite at CES, is how freely these joints rotate. It's very, very nice to see because normally they're stiff. Now, the way these joints work is they have to stay sealed no matter what kind of pressure you're putting on it from this direction or that direction. They're swiveling on the radiator as well. They go all the way around on the radiator. So they have to stay sealed and they have to also not put any additional strain on the fitting, which can cause it over time to leak. So having them so flexible like that just means that you're not gonna run into any difficulty with that. One of the most important design differences between this and Swift Tech has done previous sort of all-in-one liquid coolers, like their drive series, is that it uses a Swift Tech designed and manufactured pump. So unlike what everyone else is doing, where they're pretty much OEMing through Coolit or Asetek, or I believe Cooler Master also manufactures their own, Swift Tech is now a manufacturer of pumps not a rebrander of pumps. So in the past, Swift Tech even was using Lang for the pumps for their all-in-one liquid coolers. So now you find a completely redone design all by Swift Tech with a Swift Tech base plate, a Swift Tech pump, Swift Tech design fittings, and uh, special tubing and even hold downs for the tubing itself. So check out this hold down here. They're using a custom sort of like a worm drive clamp where you've got a very slight bulge right here. So you can see the lip on the fitting itself and the way that the clamp actually fastens down all the way tight. So you don't really have to think about the way that you're mounting it so that it will form a perfect seal, not over tighten and not under tighten. So it can't actually go anywhere. But the thing about this is it uses a standard Phillips head. So if you wanted to, clearly labeled in and out on the other side, presumably. Nope, just the inlet is labeled. So if you wanted to, you can actually remove this and plumb it up to a completely custom water loop, which is an option that the existing products on the market don't really have because you can't really drain them, you can't really refill them. This one has a drain plug on the radiator itself. It has completely removable tubing with fittings that can be reused with other industry standard 3 8 inch tubing. 
and reusable clamps so that you don't have to worry about sort of damaging in any way. I actually did empty and refill a generation one LCLC, but it was a bit of a bear. So the drain plug is here on the radiator. So the radiator has a built-in sort of extra part here that's uh, kind of a reservoir. It has a little bit of extra room in it. So it's not a ton of extra fluid, but it'll be pretty much all you'll need. So if you were gonna drain it, you just take the whole thing and go like this, pretty much after you open up the drain plug. You wanna refill it, you refill the whole thing with it oriented like this, get it as full as you can, and there you go. You've actually refilled it. SwiftTech also takes things a step in the right direction, I believe, by pre-installing the fans on the radiator itself in the orientation where they expect you to use it. They also include the screws that you need to mount the, here we go, which ones are these? Da, 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 da. I haven't looked closely at this yet, but it looks like, yeah, to mount the radiator directly to the case, so in that case, remember guys, these fittings up here swivel around completely. So to mount the radiator directly to the case or to mount, da, 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 flip this around, the fans directly to the case, whichever you prefer. You wanna use it as an inlet or an outlet, that is totally up to you. And the fact that the fans are pre-installed and you just screw the screws into the fan plastic housings themselves, rather than all the way through as a bolt through to the radiator, just means that you don't have to We've all gone through this, installing these pre-done liquid coolers where you hold this in place and you align the fan and then you thread the screw and you try to get it in. They also have their own custom fans installed on here, so these are fully sleeved, look absolutely gorgeous. In fact, let's get a close-up of the uh, of the sleeveness. They're PWM four-pin fans, and based on the performance and noise characteristics that we saw in the Swift Tech suite at CES, I am expecting these fans to be just freaking awesome. I mean, you can tell the way that they're designed. They are optimized for pressure, not necessarily for free airflow, but uh, that is exactly the application that they're being used in. Although this radiator does use a fairly, um, like not a super dense fin arrangement, so it is optimized for quiet operation as opposed to being optimized for extreme performance with like delta fans on it, for example. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't do the obligatory uh, finger shot of the base. I mean, Swift Tech's been doing water blocks for as long as pretty much anybody else out there. So they do know a thing or two about designing a water block, um, a thing or two, or two about precision manufacturing them, and a thing or two about making it difficult to remove the plastic covering until you've actually unscrewed the base plates. There you go. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you guys how reflective that surface is. I mean, remember, reflectivity is not necessarily an indication of performance, but uh, you got that, Diesel? Yeah, he says he's got it, uh, but it can't hurt. SwiftTech also includes a high quality thermal compound. This looks like a Shinetsu tube, but I actually have no way of knowing for sure. It could also be an MX uh, derivative of some, some, some sort. I mean, most of the thermal compounds out there are sort of a few different brands, but uh, SwiftTech assured me this is one of the better ones out there. And I think that pretty much covers it in terms of the unboxing. So what's good about this? In the Swift Tech booth, they had their custom pump running not only the CPU block and the radiator that was included, but also additional blocks such as graphics card blocks or even a built-in water block like something you might find on a Maximus 5 formula, which we happen to have over on the test bench over there with Slick's empty drink glass next to it. Way to go, Slick. Mind you, he didn't know we were gonna point the camera over there. Um, so you can actually plumb up additional blocks. They had an additional radiator running through it and it was still holding up just fine. That's the reason why the other manufacturers don't want you to expand your pre-done liquid cooling loop because the pump isn't capable of powering it. Well, this one can and it actually runs off of a four pin PWM connector. Speaking of fan connectors, SwiftTech also includes this guy right here, which is freaking sweet. So this is actually an eight way, so channel one is labeled and it's got a red little thing on it. So this is actually an eight way PWM fan splitter. What it does is you just plug in Molex power and then you plug it up, plug it into a PWM fan controller for monitoring and you can hook up up to eight fans and just run them all somewhere in your case. I've seen this included on cases. Here, I'm gonna give a close up for Diesel to have a look at. I've seen this included on cases like the Phantom 630 from NZXT, but Swift Tech figures, well, why should that be tied to a case? Go ahead, strap it to something, screw it into something. Not those screws, different screws these screws, screw it into something, whatever you want, hook up all your fans to one place because it makes it easier for monitoring and controlling. Thank you for checking out my unboxing and first look at the SwiftTech H220 pre-filled, pre-fabbed, pre-installed almost with the fans on there. 
liquid cooling system. Stay tuned, guys. We are going to do a performance review on this one in our standard test bench and see how it stacks up away from SwiftTech's testing setup. Although, based on how closely I looked at their testing setup, I think we're going to get pretty much the same results. But uh, hey, that's what third party validation is for. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.